All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Kenshada Daniels, and I am the founder of Off the Hamster Wheel Ministries. I also have a um, home care agency consulting company called Virtual Home Care Solutions. As I consult and help home care owners with um, being successful in their business, getting organized, and keeping up with the times. So I also help um, business owners as well um, to help them with, you know, different needs in their personal or business um, um, endeavors. So that's a little bit about me. I also have a YouTube channel where I post uh, various informational videos um, catered to home care agency owners or just women in general. So go to my YouTube channel, Kinshada Daniels, and check it out. So today's video, I am going to be showing you how to create a PayPal link, right? I'm sure you've all seen... Um, you know, people who may be selling products, offering um, online courses or events or, or anything like that, a lot of people use PayPal links. And it's not that hard to create one. So if you're going to be hosting an online event or person event or you're selling a book, a t-shirt, and you want to provide your customers, potential customers or clients with a link to purchase and that's secure, you can use PayPal. So all you will have to do is just set up a PayPal account and then I'll show you. So what I'm going to be doing, I will um, be logging into my um, PayPal account. So one moment, let me share my screen. Okay. All right. So you should be able to see my screen right now. This is the uh, PayPal login screen. So if you don't have a PayPal account at this point, you need to set a PayPal account. If you will be using this uh, personal needs, and just use your personal email address and create a password. Now, if you're going to be using PayPal for a business, you, you want to use your business email address and set up a um, created password as well. So if this is for business, you always want to make sure that everything links to your business and back to your business bank account. So in order to utilize PayPal to receive payments, you need to have, have a bank account um, attached to your PayPal account. So if you have a business, it's for business, then you will connect your uh, business account to PayPal. If it's for personal uses, personal reasons, then you will connect your personal uh, checking or savings account. But you've got to have a bank account connected. So I've already have my PayPal account set up. I've had it for uh, a few years now. And I also use it for um, I use it for business and I use it for personal, um, which is, which personal also relates to the business things that I do. So for the most part, it is used for business and I have it connected to my uh, bank account already set up. So what I'm going to be doing is logging in. Okay. <clears throat> So you see, I have my email is there and I just enter my password. Okay, so as this load, it'll bring me to my home screen. Now on your home screen, it's going to show um, your PayPal balance, um, money that's come in uh, for the week, money that's going out. So this is, um, it'll show different information. So where we're going to go is, you see all the tabs up top, you have home, activity, pay and get paid, marketing for growth, financing, app center. So the tab that we're going to utilize is pay and get paid. So I'm going to click on that. All right. So it's going to bring you to this screen. 
which the first section will be under the wallet. Second section will be under invoicing. The third section is make payments. And the last and fourth section is accept payments. So this is the tab that we're going to um, select from under the accept payments. So you're going to scroll all the way down to PayPal buttons. Okay. So for those of you who will be watching this video and replay, I want to go at a um, slow enough pace to give you time to click on the buttons as I'm teaching it in the video. So you want to click on PayPal buttons. All right, we're going to do that. Okay, so next is going to bring you to the screen that is going to ask you, which button would you like to add? All right, so there's a few different types of buttons and it depends on the type of services, products um, that you will be selling or offering. Now, okay, they have smart buttons. That's for PayPal, Vimo, PayPal credit, okay. You can also use this one, sell on social media. Okay, you can sell items on your social media account. This you can connect to, you know, Instagram. You can use this link. The third one is buy now. If you only have one item and like you just want to post a t shirt um, on your Facebook or your Instagram and you want people to be able to purchase it, all you would do is use this link here, buy now post the item and then you will also post the link. Now, the fourth one is add to cart. Now this is for those of you who have several different items. You know, sometimes people have t-shirts, tote bags, mugs, um, books, you know, different type of items. Then you would definitely want to use the add to cart so that you will give them the option to select multiple items at a time. But for this video, I am only going to be focusing on single item links, which we will utilize the buy now. So if you're on this screen, we are going to click on buy now. This is the button that we're going to work with. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. So now if you can see, you should be able to see my screen. Now we are under the create PayPal payment button. All right, so step one, we have to choose the type, okay? So like I said, if you have a single item like a t-shirt or a tote bag or a book to sell, then you can keep it the same as buy now, okay? We're gonna keep that the same. Also, what is the name of your item? Okay, so let's say you have a, um, a queen mug. So you would come here, type in queen mug. That's it. Okay, so now, if you have an item ID, um, for those of you who um, itemize your products, then this is where you would enter your item ID in this section. But for now, we're not going to use it because typically most of us wouldn't have an item ID, and that's okay. So the next thing that we're going to enter is the price. So let's say we'll do $15.95. So what you want to do is type in $14.95 and keep the currency as USD, that's US dollars. And that's it. Okay. So now we're going to scroll down. Now this is the um, customize the button. So over here, this is showing you right now to you when you use this link, this is what it's going to look like to your customers. The buy now and then it's going to have the different um, credit card uh, symbols under the buy now button. Now, if you want to leave it at like it is, you can. But if you want to make the buy now button smaller or remove the credit cards from the bottom, 
to give it a little more uh, cleaner look, as I would say, then what you would do is click on the customized text or appearance. And right here, you see the first block that says use smaller button. And then there's also a box that's checked for display credit card logos. Now, if you wanna leave the buy now button the same size and remove the credit card logos, then you would just uncheck that box. Now look, so all you have now is the buy now button, which is still a good size. Now, if you wanna make that button smaller, let me show you what it would look like smaller. So you would just simply check this box and then now it's smaller. So it depends on you. It depends on how do you want the button to be or how do you want it to look on your, um, click on the link from your social media or, you know, um, Instagram post or wherever you will be placing the link. It's totally up to you. Now, I'm going to leave that there. Now, for those of you who want to add options. Okay, let's say you have different colors for your queen mug. All right, so if you want to customize that, you would click on the first, says add drop down menu with price option. Now, all of them will leave the price the same, but let's change this. Let's say option, the first option, they can choose a white mug. All right, let's enter blue for the second and purple for the last. Okay, so it's just that easy. So even if um, you only have one item like a mug, but you offer it in different colors, you can utilize this drop down, enter each color the price, if the price is the same, then it's gonna auto-populate as the same, $19.95. We'll leave that there. And then when you're done, you click on done. And now let's go over to the right where it says your customer's view. You always wanna look at this to see, it will show you how it's going to look to your customers. So you see here in the drop down, the first one is white, $14.95. Then they click on the arrow, they can choose blue or purple, just that easy. Okay, so the next thing you can customize is a add dropdown menu. Now this one is a little bit different. It doesn't have the price, but again, you can, only, you can offer different colors, okay? Let's say you want them to be of a different color, but necessarily need the price next. So, all right, enter the same thing. Let's enter a few different colors. And then we'll take a look at how that turns out for you. All right. Okay. So now I've entered my colors. And remember, this option doesn't have the price next to it, only the colors. So in essence, if the price is still the same and you don't necessarily need to see it or want your customers to see it, you only want them to be able to choose which color they want for that item, then you can use this. So when you're done, you click done and, and let's uncheck that first one. So we only have this option. See, now if you come over to the customer's view, the first color option is black. They can choose yellow or green. Okay. All right. So the third thing that you can customize is the text field. All right. So in this, you can add um, a description. You can say, I'm going to just uh, make up something for a mug. We can put made in the US. Um, also made to order. Mm 
All right. I think I probably put too many characters. So I'll just use made in the US. Okay. So now look, this is our customs view. Now they have the first option. They can choose a color. And then also they have a description here, made in the US. See how that looks? It's pretty cool. Okay. So that's it for the customizing. Now, here's the shipping. If you want to um, include a shipping price, let's say $350 to ship the mug. This is where you would add the shipping amount, okay, for your customers. So if the standard shipping amount for the mug is $350, you will add it here. Now, if you're going to use tax, um, you can. However, I don't. But you know, um, here in Florida, the sales tax is 7%. Okay. All right. So now the step two is track inventory, profit and loss. This is optional. I'll show you guys what it looks like. But I don't use it personally for my items. Okay. So step three is customize advanced features. Now, all right. So these are some of the features that you can utilize at the checkout. Okay. Do you want to let your customer change order quantities at the checkout? Okay. If they, they initially um, put, they only want to buy one mug, but then they get to the checkout and say, you know what? I think I'll buy a mug for my friend. Do you want them to be able to change the one to the two? Of course. Of course, you want them to be able to order the amount that they really want, right? Okay, so the next one is, can your customer add special instructions in a message to you? All right, so this is typically for those type of items that um, may be embroidered. So if they want something uh, specific wrote on their shirt or mug, like if you're giving them the option, then you would um, click yes. And then it will allow them to type in whatever they want um, it to say on their t-shirt or anything like that, tote bag. So I'm gonna click no. All right, do you need your customer's shipping address? Yes, you do. So that's already checked. All right, so take customers to this URL when they cancel their checkout. Now, do you want them, if they, they say, you know what, I want one of these mugs, but then something comes up and they get distracted and the mug is just sitting there in the cart, in the shopping cart. Um, just sitting there in the shopping cart. Do you want them to be able to um, reroute to a different uh, website? I'm sorry, guys. Okay, my screen refresh. Do you want them taken to a website to kind of um, refresh their memory? If so, then you would check this box, put in the website there. I'll just make up something, uh, mug.com. And then that's it. Or take customers to this URL when they are finished with the checkout. Now, after they've purchased you, do you want to be routed to your website where you may have more options, more box, more things that they um, can choose from. If so, check this box and come down here, put in, in your website. And once they finish checking out, they will be routed to this website. I think that is awesome. So it also gives them the chance to go to your website, learn a little bit more about you as a person or your business, your nonprofit or ministry, some of the things that you're doing. And a lot of times when people become familiar with you and they know a little bit more about you, they will feel comfortable in buying from you. You know, um, it's not often that people are willing to buy from complete strangers, you know? So the more they know, it'll benefit you, okay? So down here is advanced variables, which I don't utilize myself personally, but um, 
you can if you want. You can use a line break between each variable. The variables will appear in your button's HTML code. So this is getting into a little bit of the coding, which um, typically when you have a website made or anything like that, you utilize the HTML codes. So we're not going to bother with that. Now, once you're done, once you're done with all three steps, okay, so we're done with three, you will come down here, create button. All right, so give it a moment. Okay, so it's telling me <clears throat> the website that I entered, of course, I made it up, is not valid. It's a good thing. So make sure when you're typing in your website that you type it in correctly, because if not, then it'll bring you back to the page and then you'll just have to correct it. Okay, there you go. My button is created. So once you create the button, it brings you to this one. Add your button code to your web page. Now, for those of you who have websites and you want to put your T-shirt, your mug, or whatever you're offering on your website, along with the code, if you know how to do it or if you have a person who's in charge of managing your website, this first code here, you notice the tab says website. This first code is the code that they will need to put on your website. This is HTML code, or you can do it yourself if you know how to do it. So what you would do is add the picture um, on your website. If you have a shop tab, you will go in, add the picture, and then you would also go in to add a button on your website. And in that button, you will input the HTML code. So here you would click on select code. It will highlight it right click copy go over to your website and input this code you will paste it in the correct spot okay all right for those of you who are not doing it for your website you just need it for social media or email you will click on the email tab you will click on the link highlight copy and then you will go to your facebook page or Instagram, you wanna make sure you add a picture of the item. You will add the picture and then you will paste the link under the picture. And then whatever you wanna say, like, okay, now check out my new queen mug. You can purchase this using this link and then paste the link and you know, whatever you want. And that's it. That's all you have to do to create. A now, if you ever want to, find your button or look at the list of buttons that you've created. All you will have to do is come down here and it says, go to my saved buttons. Do you guys see that down there? With green check, my save button, and then go over here to the blue link right here. Click on that, go to my save buttons. Let's give it a moment to load. Okay, see here? It has it. The, the last button that I created was Queen Mug. Now I'm going to delete that. I only created it for this video, but there you will see Queen Mug right there. And then if you want to go back to your profile or the home page, you just click home. And if you want to create another button, uh, let's see, you would just click on, like I told you in the beginning, pay and get paid. So click on pay, get paid. Okay, so I've shown you um, where to go, this is how to start all over and create another button. And remember, you're always going to click on the tab PayPal buttons, PayPal buttons. And then that's where you go to create your PayPal button, which is ultimately going to be used as a link for your customers 
to purchase from you and for you as a business owner to accept payments. Okay. So it's not hard at all. You can do it. And for those of you who may not feel comfortable or need a little bit more assistance, you can reach out to me and schedule a consultation. I do consultations um, during the week, um, sometimes on the weekends, but you can reach out to me for additional help uh, with creating buttons if you get stuck or something seems confusing. Also take advantage of my other video that I've um, sent out an email for. It's about um, showing you guys how to create an online form. So for those of you who have a business and you have an event um, or a conference or something and you need an online fillable form so that you can register and also pay the registration fee, that's a good video for you to take advantage of. Also, if you are a business owner and you need an online job application, you can also utilize it for that or um, right that particular video is a 45 minute video. I show you how to create an online form. And right now it's only $10. I mean, what's $10 to invest in yourself and learning and something that's going to help you, you be successful in your business. So for those of you, you can visit my website, uh, virtualhomecaresolutions.com and check out the different things that we offer. And you also can connect with us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram. Please follow. You can follow Kinshada Daniels or you can follow uh, Virtual Home Care Solutions. So we're out there. We're out here helping and teaching our people how to be successful and also how to do things in an ex inexpensive way that it doesn't hurt your pockets. So that's what I'm about, showing you ways that you don't have to spend a lot of money. All you have to do is utilize the things that's in front of you, which there's a lot of free things out there that we can utilize to help us to be more organized and successful in business, okay? So there's no excuse. There's always room for growth. There's always room for learning. So I hope this video has helped you and it was very informational. If there's another topic that you would like for us to teach on or show you how to do something, please email us or send us a message on one of our social media sites. All right. Thank you, guys.